Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, I've got a little project today I'm going to be doing for the uh, museum, uh, Georgia Museum of Agriculture. They've got a steam-powered cotton gin out there. I think I've shown some videos and some things from that in the past, but they were running that the other week, and I uh, had a problem with one of the uh, whistle valves or the whistle valve on the cotton gin. This is just a valve when you put a string on here, when you pull the handle, it's a spring-loaded valve that lets steam go up to the whistle. and this was just leaking like crazy. In fact, to the point that they just had to shut the valve off. So uh, anyway, my job today is, is to take this thing apart and uh, let's see if we can figure out what's going on with it. I'm suspecting that the valve seat in it has uh, gotten some erosion in it and we just need to reface that and uh, relap it and hopefully it'll be back in good shape. So let's take it apart and see what it looks like and see if it's something we can fix. So uh, we'll start, got a little cotter pin here holding uh, this piece in. So let's uh, see if we can get that off. I think what I'm gonna do is we'll just cut these. Now I'll squeeze them together. Pull that out. I've got plenty of those. We can replace that with no problem. Put a fresh one in there. All right. So I see that that has been brazed up over time where it has just worn. That's just the valve that opens and closes that. And they have a little washer in there just to take up some, some space. So uh, that's a... Uh, Go ahead and put this in the vise. Go ahead and start taking this apart. So this is loose up top, and then there's a jam nut, and then there's this little piece on the back, the bracket that holds that little lever. So I'm gonna go ahead and loosen this up. Now it all kind of spins where I can deal with it. All right, that's off. that jam nut out, that bracket, and a washer that's just a spacer in there it looks like. Okay, that is the um, valve. There it comes. Turn spring, and we can see the valve. So interesting. All right, so this does not have the type of um, valve seat in it that I was expecting. This looks like a Teflon seat. There's our little valve stem that pushes in. Pull that out. Well guys, I'm gonna do something a little bit sketchy here, but I think it's going to work. So the way this valve is set up is there is a flat face uh, down in the bottom of this uh, recess and there's a the little plunger part that goes up and down. It also has a flat face on it. And what's happened is, is these two faces have just become worn over the years. The steam will actually erode it over time. It gets some little ripples in it and it just doesn't get a good seal anymore. So I've got a, a kit for fixing valves that has different types of cutters in them. One of them is a flat cutter. Unfortunately, my little tool that I normally can use for doing valve refitting, it won't fit on this valve. This valve is not the right type of valve for that kit. But I have the cutter, let me show you here. But I do have the cutter that goes with that kit for a flat face that basically will hopefully cut that face flat. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just setting this up on the lathe. So I've got my part 
I know this looks like it's probably running out, but it's, it's true down in the bottom. That's the main thing. That's the, it's, it's chucked up on that, the same stem that everything was machined on. Of course, this being a casting, you're gonna see some run out in it. So uh, I think I've got it set up in there where it needs to be. And we're just gonna put our cutter here in the tailstock and run it up in there and let it cut. So that's the game plan. Uh, let me reposition the camera and hopefully all we're going to do is just go in there and just touch that surface until it cleans up. I don't want to take very much material off of it, just enough to clean it up. So uh, let's uh, reposition the camera. We'll get a shot of me doing this. All right, we got our um, cutter turning. I'm going to bring my tailstock up here, get it locked down in place. And now I'm just going to feed that in there until he gets down on that bottom seat very gently, not quite there yet. All right, there we go. I'm not, I'm just taking real light cuts. Let's see what that looks like. I'm gonna pull it all out here. cleaned up almost all the way around. I need just a little bit more. There's one little area in there. I know you can't see it, uh, but I'm gonna go back in there and just take a little bit more. It needs just a little bit more, guys, and I'm being really, really careful here. I'm not, I'm really not wanting to take very much material out at all, so I'm taking very light cuts and looking. So uh, I think one more pass though and we should be good it was it was just a little bit tiny area in there while i'm over here on the lathe i also want to go ahead and reface this little surface here this is the actual valve that goes up on that seat it's also a flat valve i believe that's a type of plastic material maybe teflon or something down in there and it's a little bit rough um, i've just got an insert piece of tooling in here. I'm not sure how that's going to cut that plastic. I figure we'll, um, we'll see. Let's just uh, barely face that. There we go. And I see just one little piece in there. It didn't look like it cleaned up. Go back across it. And that got it there. And that's all that took right there. That is all cleaned up. Nice fresh face. Those two faces should match one another now. And hopefully seal up. Just taking a quick peek down inside there, you can see that nice uh, surface has been cleaned up now. And uh, with this mating surface here, hopefully between the two, we'll be in good shape. So let's put this back together. I thought I'd show this body here just to kind of show you how it works while we got it apart. So you can see there's an arrow. This is the direction that the steam comes in. So the steam comes in on the bottom and you see it kind of goes on the back side. There's a casting in the middle that separates it and if you look on the other one it comes out the other side but basically the steam comes in there uh, it's on the back side of this uh, this valve there is a the valve is in there it's pushing down on there and uh, the way the pressure is when uh, it's, it's keeping it closed and then you when you pull the handle it takes a little plunger here it pushes the valve open that opens the valve and when it does it lets the steam into this chamber and it comes up this way and then you can look in there again you see the shelf in there so that's basically how this valve works it just uh is a little piece in there that opens up and closes and it's normally closed and whenever you pull the handle it opens the valve opens it up lets the steam out and that goes to the whistle blows the whistle let's put her back together all right, we'll start by putting our little 
valve stem in here. This is basically what pushes that valve open. It comes up from the bottom. There's packing around the bottom to hold it in there. And then this is the valve plunger. Of course, we face that surface that matches that other face surface in there. Goes on. Got a spring. This just applies pressure to it. Keeps it closed. Little keeper here. This just plugs it up. That little stem helps line up the plunger and it actually fits down. Let me show you this. It fits down over that and that helps to guide it. So uh, that valve, when it's completely closed, it's always in that, that little track and that just helps to guide it so it keeps it aligned. Put this back together, put our spring in there. There we go. And then this just all holds it in place. And uh, you know what? I might want to, while I'm doing this, I think I'm going to go back over to the lathe. I'm just going to barely touch this surface here because it mates up against this. And that will just make sure I have a nice good seal there as well. Um, because that is a place where steam can escape. So uh, it's actually at a little bit of an angle. But I'm going to freshen that up while I, while I got it apart. Might as well. All right, I did put that in the lathe. I did end up not cutting it. I didn't want to have to reset these angles on here. So I just hit it with a little piece of scotch Bright, polished it up. Let's put this together. be good so as you can see that takes a little bit of pressure to push that in that spring is holding it in there now down inside of this there's some packing material and uh, I'm not going to worry about trying to take it out it looks like it's in good shape there's this packing gland that goes down in here and you just tighten this nut on the top up and that continues to push that packing around this and that keeps the steam from escaping around your stem so uh, and you can add more packing in there as needed or pull it out and replace it whatever I'm not fooling with that uh, they did not have any problems with that so uh, we're gonna leave it like it is all right so they had a washer on here as a spacer I'm really not crazy about how that looks but I'm not gonna mess with it. I'm gonna leave it like it is I think let's see this piece here just tightened oh hang on a second missing a piece we got the our jam nut that holds that bracket in place then we put our little piece on the end this this just compresses that little gland in there for keeping that packing tight and when you start seeing some steam around this you can tighten that up and it'll press it in there tight again and hopefully everything will go. And like I said, when it gets down all the way, you just uh, take it off and, and put new packing in there. I'm not, I don't remember how they had this aligned. I'm just going to snug it up and we'll let them adjust that at the museum. That's an easy adjustment to make. Go ahead and uh, tighten this up. Get that packing good and tight around that valve. All right, they had a little washer in there to kind of take some of this wobble out. I think what I'm going to do is try to squeeze these together. They've just expanded over time and gotten loose. So um, all right, that feels a lot better. Let's see if we can get our pin started in there now. There we go. And I pushed it in and it's not wanting to push back. Huh, you know what guys, I'm gonna take this back apart and I wanna inspect this, this uh, little 
plunger rod here. I'm wondering if it's perfectly, if it may not be bent or it may need polishing, but it's sticking. It's not wanting to shut. So I'm going to, that's not good. Let me, uh, let me see if I can take it back apart and figure out what's going on. I think, I'm hoping anyway, that the problem was, was there was just some crud on this thing. I took it over to my scotch Bright wheel and just polished that shaft up where it's nice and smooth. And hopefully that is going to allow it. It was just sticking in there. I had a, actually had a hard time pulling it out once that packing got tied around it. So hopefully this will uh, fix the problem. That feels a lot smoother now than it did a while ago. So um, I'm going to put this back together and see if that doesn't fix it. I think it will. Yeah, that's much better. All right, let's put a cotter pin in there. I'm going to trim that off a little bit. It's a little bit long. And with that, and with that, I think we have a nicely restored, refurbished whistle valve. I will get that out to the museum and let them get that put back up on the cotton gin. Thought I'd show real quickly this little uh, valve tool that I've got for recutting, re uh, cutting the seats and valves, and that we use the cutter from. And um, it's got cutters for doing, you know, the, the valves that are at an angle. And it also has the ones for doing a flat valve like we were doing today. This is the tool that actually clamps onto the, the chuck there's, um, or onto the valve. There's, there's these different, there's a, basically it's like a little three jaw chuck in here that opens and closes. This has got thread pitches in it just like would be the threads for your valve that locks it in place and that basically puts it on center with uh, your, your valve and you can put the different cutters on here to reach down inside that valve and spin it by hand. It actually has a way you can, you can lock it in place and feed it down, spin it, feed it down, spin it, and so on. But because of the way that valve was uh, set up, where I couldn't grip it on the inside, it really wasn't going to work right for that setup. So that's the reason I just used the tool and went over to the lathe. And there you go. One little job done. Quick, quick job in the shop today, but I thought you guys might enjoy seeing that. Um, we get to do a lot of this kind of work at the museum, working around all their steam equipment, and this kind of stuff just comes up all the time. And uh, they usually ask me to help out with it. I was glad to do so today. So uh, we saved another valve. Uh, you can still get these valves. I mean, you can go purchase a new one, but they're expensive. And uh, I like to save these valves. I do, I've actually fixed quite a few valves out there for them over the years. Uh, because it's just really you got those seats in there that wear is usually the problem and uh, you go in there and use this little kit like I've got here or, or a variation like we did today cut some new seats on there and these valves are good to go again for another long period of time and uh, you don't have to replace them and quite honestly some of these older valves are a lot better than the newer ones that you can get today so if we got a good old valve, we'll try to save it if possible. So there you go. That's going to be a wrap. As always, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, comments are always appreciated. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you like what you saw today, give me a thumbs up, and uh, we'll catch you on the next video.